In this video, all you need to know to get up and running with the ESP01 and WLED. If you're new here, oh, welcome. If you're not new here, you would have already seen my other LED projects, like my RGB trampoline. If you haven't seen those, have a look at them. So this video might make a bit more sense to you. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to program up one of these little uh, ESP01 controllers for you to, to have a look at. Um, with all the projects I've made, they've got this little controller driving the LEDs with WLED software. So the WLED software is um, firmware you can download onto these controllers, right? You can use these ESP01s, ESP32s, anything uh, at 266, and um, it controls the lights. So uh, the WLED firmware itself is quite powerful. It, when you program it, it comes up with a nice UI. You can set all the lights up and to do all sorts of different different things. But I think the real power in this firmware is being able to control the LED string from other software like DMX software. <coughs> I got a video here which covers DMX software controlled LED lighting. Uh, so I almost exclusively use these little uh, LED strip LED these little controllers um, mainly because they um, they do everything I do need it to do right it's it's kind of a dumb terminal for LED strips you can use these P32s like I mentioned but you've got this controller which has got you know dozens of pins on there for all sorts of inputs and outputs but this LED strips need one pin and these um, little ESP ones have, have two pins so you could have one as an input any one for output, so there's not much redundancy there. Whereas you're spending money on those other things, and it's a, a they're, they're bigger, and, and b it's this it could be used for other things, right? And these are super super cheap in comparison. So today we'll just do a uh, quick hardware rundown on what um, I have in all my LED projects, and um, what's what you'll need to get them programmed up. So by the end of the video, you will be able to get the required hardware and program your own ESP01s. So to start with, we'll just look at the hardware that I have in the majority of my projects. We've got the little um, driver board here, LED strip of course, and it's just a programming jig with the ESP1 on top. So when you connect into a, a controller, you just need to connect one pin and then you've got to sort of fill around with the power um, for the for the LED lights because you don't want to run the LED lights directly off the output pin of the controller or just cook it because they draw too much current. So with this little um, driver board it has a um, input which um, shows the it has an input which has all the power going into the same Two pins, so you just connect your power up to that pin and it routes the power to the ESP01, which only handles which only takes 3.3 volts. So if you connect that directly to 5 volts, you'll, you'll blow it, and it, then the other two pins go directly to the light the uh, LED strip. So all you need to do is disconnect the power to there. Uh, you'll notice, um, so we've got the LED strip here. and it has a connector like this which is not the same as the connector on here it won't connect in so you've got this adapter cable and there's two options really you can either um, chop this one off because you can obviously daisy chain these together so if you've got another one you can just connect it in and have as many as you want i guess and uh, so you can either chop the end off um, this one, if you're not going to daisy chain them, and then put the plug on there, and then use that to connect to this one. Or um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desolder this from um, off the input. There's an arrow. There's arrows here pointing towards the direction of the data. So you need the 
the wires coming from the driver board going to the the scene which is the data set of data flows from one way otherwise it's just not going to work so i'm going to remove this uh solder this lead back on and then plug it into our board with um some power and then um, it should be good to go as far as winding up the lights then we've just got to program the controller okay so we're we're all soldered up here it's quite hard to get it wrong um it's got a positive five volts of ground and a data line obviously positive is going to be red uh, ground's going to be black and the yellow is going to be the data line i've got a power lead hooked up here it's got a plug on here but it's not keyed in any way so you can connect it around the wrong way so just be careful the outer pin is always the positive pin and i connect this up to the power and the uh, little blue light turns on to tell me that it's, it's got power. If I plug the LEDs in, nothing happens because there's no data to make it happen. So we just need to try our controller here. and nothing of note happens because this controller is blank it's just got some weird signal that's firing off the first led so now we just need to program the esp controller so it'll we can with the wled firmware so let's do that so we just want to get the firmware off the air cookie wled uh, github uh, link obviously be in the show notes and then when you get to the site you've got these on the right hand side you've got this releases click on that and we want to choose the esp01 firmware particularly but it's got esp28266 which is the same controller but it doesn't work um, so use the esp01 the only downside i found using this particular uh, controller compared to the esp32s and the other ones is there's no over the air update which means you can't update the firmware without having to plug it into a jig but um whether it's a good or bad thing i'm not sure it's for me it doesn't really matter I'm not too fast because i'm usually normally just streaming data through dmx to the controller uh, and it's sort of all the software on the other hand is doing the heavy lifting as long as the wld receives it as it always does doesn't matter so we'll just click on that one and download it and then we need to write the firmware to program the uh, controller i got this little programming jig um they're pretty cheap i've seen lots of people make their own jigs uh trying to program them uh programs via an arduino don't waste your time these things are two bucks and they work straight away and just plug it in and it works so Save yourself a bit of agony. Mm. To write the firmware itself, I'm using the Express Air tool. Uh, it's um, on their website. I'll obviously share a link in the show notes. They develop this firmware, so I guess it's more of a hardware. So it should work right. So run the software, it comes up with this screen here. Just click on leave it on ESP8266 because that's the chip on here. And work mode develop and OK. And you're presented with the screen in here we want to choose the firmware we've just downloaded from the um, air cookie software air cookie firmware or the wled and we just pop that in there and here it wants an address to start at so we put in oxo and we tick the box and then we get the jig we plug it into a usb and we click on start there's some details in the background of what it's doing so um, whether it's useful or not i'm not sure and of course the progress bar down the bottom tells us that it's, it's doing something uh, just a note 
um, the COM port might or not already be selected for you, but there's, for me, there's, there's only one COM port, so I can hardly get it wrong. So in here, we're just putting in a file, browsing to get our file, OXO, and checking the correct COM port, clicking on start, and the firmware is writing. Okay, it's all done. Let's plug it into our strip and see what happens. Okay, so we've got our controller all programmed up, so let's plug it in and see what we get. And that is the, um, that's the default life cycle for um, WLED, so I know the firmware is written correctly. So we just need to wait a few minutes and the AP point for the WLED will flash up on your computer and then we'll have to be able to put the other bits and pieces. Okay, so now if I go to my Wi-Fi on the PC, we can see the WLED AP, which is the default AP name, and connect to that. But the default password is WLED1234, and this is your pretty much your the welcome screen and you go into your Wi-Fi settings and configure your AP point and all that sort of jazz. I'm not going to go into that. Um, and the other thing is we can just go back to the controls and start setting colors. So the, I can just go through and click through. All the colors are set, and then in the effects, we've got all the different effects we can apply also. So of course that's just getting you up running and started. If you want to be able to control these LEDs DMX, check out this video. If you want to be able to um, control your lights with Google Assistant. Check out this other video. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching.